Top stories in our news. A government has been challenged to explain to the country why it has opted to resell the, 500, the 750 million US dollars that euro bond are four years ahead of its maturity. And President Ed Kalungu has been urged to fire Zambia Air Force ZAF commander Eric Chimese if it is true he is on false leave for alleged involvement in corruption. And now the news in detail. Government has been challenged to explain to the country why it has opted to resell the 750 million US dollars euro bond four years ahead of its maturity. Former Finance Minister Ngandu Magande says he finds it very difficult to understand why government does not want to wait until the euro bond matures in the year 2022 before selling it. Mr. Magande says that the impression he is getting from this hurried decision is that government has already projected that the, fa the 750 million US dollars euro bond is giving Zambia problems. In an interview with QTV News by telephone, Mr. Magande is also wondering whether it is the Zambian government that is interested in selling the date or the Turkish company that is interested in buying it. Mr. Magande, who was a finance minister under the Patrick Mwanawasa MMT government, notes that it is, if it is a government that is interested, Zambians should know how the said Turkish company was selected. He says that this is especially that there are many private equities who deal in the financial market all over the world. Mr. Magande states that government should also tell the country whether or not conditions the Turkish private equity is offering are favorable than what it is paying in interest rates towards the eurobond. He says that the Zambian citizens are further wanted to know whether or not conditions that the Turkish company is offering are better than International Monetary Fund IMF loan conditions. It becomes very difficult even now for me to understand why before even the euro bond is due for payment in 2022, why they wanted to sell it to somebody else and not wait until that time. So it seems they have already projected that this euro bond is giving us a problem. And uh, unless one knows the sort of offer conditions by the Turkish company, then it becomes difficult. Ah, is it the company, the taxi company, which is interested in buying our debt, or is it us who are interested in selling the debt? If it is us, how was this taxi company selected? There are so many companies who do in the financial market all over the world. How was this taxi company selected? So if it is us who selected, I think the citizens would want to know what are the conditions. Are they more favorable than what now the government is paying in interest rates? On that basis, really, one would say that uh, unless uh, the conditions are explained to us as citizens, the government uh, might have problems in the future even to explain. Obviously, 2022, as you know, would be after the election, which are in 2021. So it might be a new government, it might be a new president, and so on. You will find it difficult if things are not explained now. For people to understand how they are being framed in the financial sort of rules. President Ed Galungu has been urged to fire Zambia Air Force ZAF Commander Eric Chimese if it is true he is on forced leave for alleged involvement in a corruption. The Opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, wants President Lungo to relieve Lieutenant General Chimese of his duties in order that he can be investigated. Secretary General Mwenyam Senga says that Lieutenant General Chimese should be probed by the Anti-Corruption Commission, ACC, in view of the allegations that have been leveled against him. Ms. Amsenge has also urged President Edgar Lungu to place his principal private secretary, Simon Amiti, on a forced leave. He believes that as the, as the then controlling officer at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Meeting may have known the alleged dubious activities a former Human Resource Director, Henry Kapoko, was involved in. Ms. Amsenga says that Dr. Miti should therefore be suggested to an investigation by law enforcement agencies in order that his name be cleared. 
He says that this is particularly that Magistrate Exnobit Zulu, who handled Mr. Kapoko's case, has raised serious concerns on how Dr. Miti was left out in the case involving the theft of 6.8 million Kwacha public funds. Meanwhile, President Ed Kalungu has been called upon to show his government's seriousness in implementing economic austerity measures by firing corrupt government officials. Economic and Equity Party EAP President Achilofetali has observed that despite introducing austerity measures, the fight against corruption in Zambia does not seem stern enough. Mr. Tali states that from the AAP point of view, the manner in which corruption is being fought in the country is as observant as attempting to draw water using a porous vessel. In an interview with QTV News, Mr. Tali says that the AAP does not think a government can effectively implement austerity measures when loopholes where public funds are being lost are still open. He Mr. Tali says his party is of the view that fighting corruption is very important when a government introduces austerity measures. He says that this means that in, for example, the Zambia Air Force ZAF Commander Eric Chimese is on forced leave for alleged involvement in corrupt activities, President Lungu should go further and fire him. Mr. Tali says his party also supports those calling on President Ed Kalungu to place his principal private secretary, Simon Miti, on forced leave. Mr. Tali says if the concern raised in the recent magistrate court ruling that Dr. Miti may have known about the theft of 6.8 million kwacha from the Ministry of Health are valid, he should not even be in government. Why not just fire this person? At least, I know they are, they are trying to know investigations and things like that. But really, some of these things are so clear that the president should show that he doesn't, he's not tolerating corruption. Okay, fine, let's leave Chimese aside. Let's talk about uh, um, uh, the PS meeting. The one who was PS at, uh, at um, um, Ministry of Health when the Nakapoko were stealing. Kapoko has now been uh, convicted, is now supposed to serve uh, 18 years of uh, imprisonment. So it is clear that there was corruption there. And Mr. Meat was, uh, or Dr. Meat was the one who was uh, at, the, at the ministry. As such, you would expect, like even the, gen the, the, uh, the magistrate said, that he should have known. So this person shouldn't even be in government. He should have been fired. Even if, let's, let's take it, Let's take it to say, no, he was not part of it, whatever, and things like that. Surely, for all that money to go, this man should have known, or at least he was negligent. The Industrial Development Corporation, IDC, has announced the intentions of setting up two fruit processing plants at a cost of 60 million kwacha in the country. Chief Executive Officer Matteo Kaluva has disclosed that one fruit processing plant will be set up in Chipata while the other in Sorwezi at a total cost of 30 million, $30 million each. Mr. Kaluva says that once operational, the IDC will be engaging local farmers in the two areas to supply fruit to plants. He is optimistic that the two fruit processing plants will not only help create employment but also empower farmers. We are setting up a fruit processing uh, plant in Eastern Province. You are aware that Eastern Province has orchards, uh, you've got mangoes all year through, you've got oranges in places like Atete, you have orchards which previously used to supply to, to Zamhot. So we are setting up a fruit processing uh, plant for Eastern Province. We are setting up uh, the famous uh, pineapples of Northwestern Province. Um, um, there's a small player there, uh, but the people of Northwestern Province produce tons and tons of uh, pineapples and other fruits. We are Research Think Tank Buy Z campaign has urged the youths in Zambia to buy in government initiative of promoting aquaculture. Founder Evan Singoma has urged the youths in the country to take advantage of the $50 million targeted at empowering local communities in aquaculture under the 7th National Development Plan. Mr. Ngoma says that his organization believes that such an investment will be self-sustaining for as long as Zambians support government initiative. In an interview with QTV News, Mr. Ngoma notes that besides creating employment and wealth for the country, 
promotion of agriculture will enable the country to reduce on imports of fish. Mr. Ngoma says that BIZ campaign holds the view that Zambia's fishery subsector can grow to an extent of the country becoming a net exporter of fish and thereby earn foreign exchange. He notes that the market for fish is already there. And Mr. Ngoma says that the theme for this year's Zambia Agriculture on Commercial Show on Sustainable Economic Empowerment reflects well on government's focus in the agricultural sector. He says that Buy Zambia campaign is in support of sustainable economic empowerment of the Zambian people. The people identified will be given the, the resources, that is an empowerment, in order for them to grow the fish and then the market which is already in abundance in Zambia and beyond, you're looking at Congo, it will be a self-sustaining venture. And so the community out there will be Bloom, the economy will bloom some in such heights that it will alleviate the poverty that is most of us in Zambia are facing. So, as Baizid, I am saying, let's take the opportunity, the youth out there, to buy into the government's initiative of empowering us with the resource, which is the money, and then we can be self-sustaining. The Zambia Cooperatives Federation ZCF has encouraged small-scale farmers to take their maize to solar milling plants and have it processed as a way of creating value addition to their produce. Director General James Tura says that farmers should not wait for a buyer to sell their maize when they can still have it processed into milling mill and sell it as a finished product. Mr. Chira says that farmers will actually make more profits if they sell their farm produce as finished goods. He says that this is given the fact that when processed, a 50 kilogram of maize gives out a 45 kilograms of melamil, which can be sold between 115 kwacha and 120 kwacha. Mr. Chirwa states that farmers should therefore view the solar milling plants set up around the country as a market of their own. When you put a 50 kg bag of maize into a solar mill, I beg your pardon, it will give you about 45 kgs of minimum. 45 kgs of minimum. Okay? So if you sell that 45 kgs of minimum, you will be getting somewhere around 119, 115, 120 kwacha for that same 50 kg bag. So what is good? Is it not good for you to put it in the mill and get more money than, than, than you would have gotten if you sold it as maize? So the milling plants should be viewed by small-scale farmers as their market. They should be heading to the milling plant which is in their location and power their maize there and start producing milling and start supplying boarding schools and start supplying hospitals and start supplying the, the shops in their towns within the respective districts where they are. We have an example of what is happening in Chongu. The milling plants that are in Chongwe have uh, gone into agreements with the schools, boarding schools in Chongwe. And this, I think Chaimbana, the university also, they, they, they are supplying. So they are producing milling, and then they are going around and collecting all the milling that is being produced from this solar mill, that solar mill, that solar mill in the district, and supplying the uh, milling to these places I'm mentioning. When you Finnish ambassador to Zambia, Timo Okonen, has observed the urgent need to allow the Zambian maize market to function without undue interference. Mr. Okonen says that he has taken note that maize is a highly political crop in the country. He says that the maize market should, however, be allowed to function if Zambia's agricultural sector is going to remain sustainable. Mr. Okonen says that this is also if it is to benefit farmers, especially those in rural areas. He has further observed the need to diversify the country's agriculture by a growing a more nutritious variety of other cash crops. You know, you should let the markets uh, function um, in, a, in a sense that, um, um, uh, that obviously the poorest of the poor of the farmers need, need support and particularly in faraway areas and, and marginal areas where it's difficult you know, to get the produce on the market. 
Um, but all in all, I'm myself personally a, a big believer in, in, in the markets working and you know the markets being there to, to set the price. And there are market mechanisms in functioning in in, in Zambia. And um, also the fact that you know the, the current system very much still is centered on maize where there are where there's clearly a need which everybody recognizes that you would need to diversify agriculture both in terms of having a more nutritious variety of other plants uh, for, for people to eat with vitamins and and, uh, and so forth and also in terms of export promotion that you know there's other plants that would fetch more money for the farmers in terms of uh, you know being exported so um, um, so maize is high, a highly political issue, I understand, in, in Zambia, and particularly the price that would need to be. And I, I'm, I won't be pinpointing any price, but I would say that you know the, you would need to give a space for the markets also to operate, and uh, and uh, in order for for agriculture to be sustainable. The Jesuit Center for Theological Reflection Executive Director Emmanuel Mumba has urged stakeholders involved in the pending national dialogue not to rush the process. Father Mumba notes that stakeholders involved in the national dialogue must give the process a time frame and ensure that it is inclusive. In an interview with QTV News, Mr. Father Mumba has stressed the need to make the dialogue process more participatory in order for it to yield the expected results. And Father Mumba has disagreed with the recent statement by Justice Minister given Lubinda that the dialogue process is delaying the constitution refinement process. When people talk of the delay, I don't know what delay they're talking about because this proposal uh, for the church to take over, I think it only came um, barely a month uh, ago. Okay? And it took time for the church to come out in the open and say, okay, we can do it and we are going to, uh, to, to do it. Okay? Uh, and the, I, I, I'm not sure how uh, the delay or lack of the delay in the dialogue process is going to, to impact directly on the amendment of the constitution. I know that there are three aspects that the, the, the dialogue maybe might focus on. It will focus on the constitutional uh, review and then the review of the electoral, uh, electoral process. Okay, those are two areas that will be looked at. Okay, so um, uh, the dialogue will take place, and I think it can happen concurrently, even when the the, the, the constitution is being um, uh, reviewed. Okay, but the electoral laws and uh, the constitution itself will have to be looked at, and I think we have to, to the change will have to take time so that they involve everyone, and so this one cannot be rushed. Okay. So if the if the, the for me, uh, I mean I'm representing the JCTR. If the review of the constitution, the amendment of the constitution has to wait in order to allow everyone to be involved in the dialogue, I think it won't be a waste of time. It won't be a waste of time. And because you want everyone who's going to be involved in the amendment of the constitution to be together, to be at peace, okay? To, be, to have that reconciliation where all the stakeholders will be on the, on the same platform as they are planning and thinking of doing whatever amendments they have to do in the constitution or in the electoral, um, uh, in, in, in electoral reforms. So they have to be on the same page. When the Opposition United Party for National Development, UP and Youth, have expressed a doubt that the ruling Patriotic Front, PF, will honor the peace agreement both parties signed. Youth National Secretary Trevor Mwinde says that this is because the ruling party has continued verbally attacking the UPND leader, Hagainde Hichilama. He says that such attacks are indicative that the ruling PF is not serious about the peace agreement that was recently signed between the two political parties. Mr. Mwinde has told Q News in an interview that the UPND youth will pursue the optimal implementation of the peace pact in order to achieve a comprehensive national reconciliation and end political violence among the youths. He says that the UPND youths will not, on the other hand, allow the ruling PF to attack its leader, Hakainde Hichilama. But what we, want, what we would want to advise the nation is that UPND is a practical oriented party and it is a party that which its roots are deep rooted in proper consultation at each and every level. 
if the president does declare that he's not aware of any follow-up meetings between the youths of the Patriotic Front and the UPND, it does not mean that he has demonized whatever was being arranged. President Yagainde Ichirema of the UPND stands ready to discuss means and ways of how violence can be stopped. That's the reason why he has been pushing for the national dialogue. But what the Center for Young Leaders in Africa, SILA, has uh, embarked on a project aimed at interrogating the electoral laws and uh, political party electoral systems in the country. Executive Director Jones Malunga says that this is in an effort to increase the participation of youths in the 2021 general elections. Mr. Malunga told Q News that the low participation of young people in previous elections need to be addressed as the country heads towards the 2021 general elections. He says his organization will therefore be engaging various stakeholders who include political parties, the Ministry of Justice and Youths, the Electoral Commission of Zambia, ECZ, and the civil society. Mr. Samalunga is optimistic that the project will help bring about change in the electoral systems to allow youths an opportunity to participate fully in observance, in governance and elections. As a centre for young leaders, we have started the, our 2018 project, and this project is anchored on the review of the electoral uh, uh, process, that is the electoral rolls, and also the, the party electoral systems for members that belong to the Centre for Young Leaders to see how we can interrogate these particular uh, roles and, I mean, laws and regulations and see how they affect the young people because we are talking about young people here participating in elections and governance and we're talking about the mayor issues. The fact that we, we've got maybe 60% of the young people contesting for the seat of Lusaka, that in itself is not necessitated necessarily by the rules and regulations in terms of the electoral act probably is just an issue of uh, the young people this particular time have come out very strongly and that kind of stopped the, the bigger people from coming but then when you look at the bigger picture if you take 2016 for example and i think young people's participation in that particular election was just a mere 28 percent which is not very very good so as a center we are going to be engaging our other parties and also other stakeholders, Minister of Justice, Minister of Youth, and the Electoral Commission of Zambia, to be able to see how we interrogate the process and see how we can come up with maybe a position, a statement that we shall present to all the political party leaders and the president ultimately to see how we can change the narrative and increase the participation of young people in the governance of this country vis a vis elections as we go towards. The Zambia Information and Communications Technology, Technology Authority, ZICTA, has revealed that it has so far pulled down over 200 fake Facebook accounts. This follows Information and Broadcasting Services Minister Doris Lea's instructions to ZICTA to write to Facebook to delete fake accounts, including 155 for President Edgar Lungu and 434 for ministers. Zikta Corporate Communications Officer Hanford Chaba, however, says it is difficult to identify those opening Facebook, Facebook accounts because they are not using their actual names. In an interview with QTV News during the ongoing show Society, Mr. Chaba has disclosed that it is against this backdrop that Zikta has engaged the Zambia Police Service. Mr. Chaba says that this is in order to help Zikta identify the culprits so that they can be brought to a book. He has warned that Zikta will not relent in ensuring that all those operating fake Facebook accounts to swindle unsuspected members of the public are held accountable for their actions. We are working with Zambia police to ensure that we try and find out who is behind these particular fake Facebook accounts. And this is not an easy going because you know, most of the people on Facebook now use names that do not exist, they use pseudonyms. But all the same, we are trying uh, our level best with Zambia police to ensure that we go behind and be able to see who could that one be. Um, suffice to mention that in the process of doing this, it requires actually concerted efforts because um, 
you know, securing a cyberspace is something that doesn't require only the authority, it requires the concerted of the even of consumers. Uh, remember, what has been happening is that the most of the people who are being impersonated in these Facebook pages are our own VIPs, uh, government ministers and so on, the directors and ministries. So what we have also done is again we have engaged the ministry, the, the various ministries and government departments to ensure that whenever they see this they quickly get back to us so that we facilitate their, their safety. And what has been happening is that uh, when a Facebook account is created under their name, they would actually use those particular platforms to swindle people. They will say probably the minister is running you know, a sponsorship or a, a, you know, a scholarship where whoever goes there deposits this particular amount of money to access that particular scholarship. Allow me now to mention here that the minister or any other government official cannot use that platform for such kind of business activity. So it is imperative that consumers, before they take that particular action, they either consult the ministry, which is purported to be offering that service, or they come to Zikta and inquire, so that we are able to guide them and give them the information that will help them in moving forward and making decisions from an informed point of view. The Zambia National Union of Teachers Public Relations Director Joe Kasaka says that while the union welcomes the secular by Ministry of General Education that pupils must not be chased for not paying school fees, it is of paramount importance to understand that learning institutions require money for their daily operations. Ms. Kasaka has told Q News that failure by parents to pay for their children's school fees has the potential to affect the, the delivery of quality education in schools. He has urged parents to combat themselves to paying for their children's schools fees because the money is le the money is later be used to meet other operational costs in schools. Ms. Sakasaka has also appealed to teachers to be engaging parents on the importance of investing in the education of their children. Now here is a situation where children have not paid any fees and the school has failed to buy disinfectants for instance for the toilets. So you expect those children to be going in those toilets without uh, uh, such disinfectants. The children are going to contract disease. So this is why we are saying it's important that uh, uh, parents get committed to paying school fees so that those school fees will be used in many ways. Some of the ways which I'm trying to talk about are maybe buying disinfectants for the toilets, buying learning and teaching materials, uh, repairing of desks, because these desks break every time. And we know the enrollments are quite uh, high. So we wouldn't want to see our children to sit on the floor. But part of that money can be used to repair those desks that could have been wasted and so on. So in short, what we are trying to say is that education has never been so uh, cheap. Education is always expensive. You are supposed to invest, you are supposed to put in. However, it is also our appeal to the people that are running our schools in the public sector that uh, they also find a way of engaging parents so that they are able to uh, pay school fees. Because without these school fees, even the dream of uh, Agenda 2030 would be far-fetched. So we want a situation where our parents be part of the education system in this country by trying to contribute. When the schools say they need to contribute a little bit of money, they need to be part of that because what they are doing is for the good of the child. So people must not just be excited that yes, there is secular so children can just be going to school without paying. It has consequences. And finally in our news, Jiad Industrial Group, one of the leading manufacturers of tractor and agricultural accessories, is contemplating to spread its operations to Southern Africa, beginning with Zambia. Director of Finance and Administration Mamun Elmna says that his company plans to set up a tractor assembly plant in Zambia because the country is landlinked to other countries in the region. Zanis reports that Mr. Elna disclosed this in an interview during the ongoing 92nd Agriculture and Commercial Show in Lusaka. And Mr. Elna says his firm will soon after the Agricultural and Commercial Show engage the Zambian government on prospects of establishing the tractor and agricultural equipment plant in the country. 
He is confident that the Zambian government will render out a piece of land so that his company can set up an assembly plant for tractor assembly for the local and regional market. Mr. Elna states that his firm's mission is to satisfy the needs of the Zambian market with mechanized agricultural technology equipment through the delivery of integrated high-quality products. He says that this is at affordable prices to assist and assimilate small and big farmers in Zambia. On that note, we end the news. Thank you so much for your time. Until then, wishing you a pleasant view.